Uh, all praise to the Most High. Uh, shalom, uh, brothers. Good to see you. Happy Sabbath. Shalom, my sisters. Happy Sabbath, and it's good to see you. I love to hear those babies, man. like to hear that thing. And, you know, it's indicative of where my mind is this morning. As a matter of fact, this, this class is somewhat geared to them in respect of being that they are our next generation. So to see the kids get into the spirit, you know, and when they're little, they don't really know what we know, but they see mommy do it. They see mommy do it. They see daddy do it. Most had great, you know, you, you, you like that thing. And that's how they begin to learn. Because believe it or not, if they're not learning this, they're learning Christmas. They're learning, what's these, I mean, I, I hear, right, well, all the wicked holidays, but I hear that on the television or whatever, whatever way they get their information now, because it used to be TV, now it's cell phones and, you know, computers or whatever. Um, there's a lot of evil that's being pushed to these children. I mean, your little babies, instead of them saying hallelujah like they do in here, they'd be saying some of that filth that's going on on the set. So my point is, our children are being sought for at a very young age. And, our, and unsuspecting parents don't realize that. Coming after our children. Coming after our children, our sons and our daughters. Because the objective is, like one of our enemies said, the quote-unquote Israelite movement. As if this is just a movement. This is the nation of Israel. This ain't got nothing to do with no movement per se. We are the children of the Most High. We are God's people. But the, but the way he put it, he said that, that the Israelite movement is a fractured organization. And what he meant by that, he's, he's basically saying that, well, the older ones are going to grow up and they're going to die out, but we're going to get the children. Okay. So like I said, let me give you the, 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 the topic. The topic of today's class is discipline, temptation, and the deceit of sin. Discipline, temptation, and the deceit of sin. Now, I'm not going to be long today, um, maybe an hour and a half, something like that, and that's about it. Now, I know I've, been, I've made promises in the past, and they went like five hours. So I've been getting some slack on that thing. The, 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 the deacons and the bishops were like, like I, I, I took the throne back. <laughs> there was a class that, that uh, Deacon Ithan and Malachi, Malachi uh, together a couple of few weeks ago. And their class went to like four hours and 30 some minutes. And then me alone. <laughs> when it took, they, they say he, he snatched the crown back. He said, you by yourself beat both of them. But uh, in all fairness, we had to do the announcements. That's when Captain Zabit was here. Remember we had that panel? We, that, that's the one that we're talking about. But, you know, <laughs> but that's an that's a, that's a inside joke with us. But y'all all right? I'm not going to do that to you today. Uh, actually, at 3 o'clock, we want to tune in. I think Bishop Kanai is doing a class. And then at 6 o'clock, uh, Deacon IBL, we wanted to get him in on the mix doing, the, uh, doing some of the Sabbath classes. So we got a pretty good lineup today. So I'm going get, to get my little part in and deal with us locally about some things that uh, some of y'all have been expressing the need to deal with the subject of... Uh, what's the word, with these kids, these young uh, teenagers and their temptation on Facebook and, and these different uh, Instagram and the same stuff that always keeps coming up, you know, and, and, um, and our kids get lured away, our children get lured away in these, in these apps and they get caught up in watching the Instagram, you know, all the different stuff that they have on there, you know, uh, and all the wickedness, yeah, thank you. All the wickedness that's on there. And these things are pulling on our children. And perhaps that's what the enemy meant when he said that we would get your children because we have many ways to get to them while you, mommy, and daddy is hard at work. You can't keep up with them. You can't watch them. So you give them a phone so they're supposed to be able to keep in touch with you, but you never get a phone call from your kids, do you? You don't get that. And, the, and their phone is full of junk. And what's in the phone? All the stuff that I've been talking about. That's what's in there. So, uh, so I want to kind of gear the class towards that. And I want to talk about us 
uh, being able to instill discipline in our children to avoid temptation and to not be tempted by the deceit of sin. That's what I want to get into, right? Um, but I want to start off with, uh, with something. Um, I was having a, um, a conversation with the brothers, a uh, couple of the brothers in New York. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, before I left New York, so we're talking a few years now, 2018. When I left New York, I remember I, was, I spoke to Officer Liam, okay, um, and Captain Yan. And those two men particularly, I was concerned about them setting up a young men's outreach program. And that was just dealing with the men. But I know our sisters need uh, such an avenue as well. And that's the reason why I, uh, most of the time I would say, well, what's going on on the Daughters of Sarah? What's going on on the Titus II? I'd ask that question. I'd ask my wife that question. I'd ask different, different sisters, what are y'all learning in Titus II? What are y'all learning in, uh, in uh, Daughters of Sarah? Because I know that, that temptation is not just on the men. It's on the women. It's actually, it's more on the women than anything. It's more on the women. It's more geared to the women. So um, there has been a thought with me to press upon um, making sure that our daughters are not being swayed, being persuaded by this evil that's all over the uh, social media. So, so that's been my thought. So as I talked about uh, the men's, when I talked to uh, Captain Yan and, and Officer Liam, I was, I was more into what's going on with these young men, these young boys, because when I was in New York, it was a whole group of the boys that would go downstairs and, and Officer Liam would talk to them. I want y'all to hear me what I'm saying now. He would talk to them, and these were high school, you know, they were some of uh, 11th grade, 12th grade, uh, 10th, 9th, those, those, those areas. And they're going to school, teenagers. Hormones are starting to act all up and all that, so y'all know what's going on in their mind. As they are in schools, these, the, the, their, their schoolmates, they ain't got a Bible nowhere in their mind, in their thoughts, in their conversations, or nothing. And then they see the young men trying to walk right, trying to not really deal with, with the wickedness the way you would normally see it. Talk to, your, talk to your sons and daughters. They'll tell you what goes on in school. Hear these men and these women that's in the body, they're trying to avoid being caught up into that thing. They're minding the time like the scriptures say. If you're among the indiscreet, mind the time. Cut it off short so that, so that you don't become influenced by it. Y'all follow me? So they're trying to live that. While they're doing that, Satan and the other kids will say things that will go straight to their brain. Uh, it, rather, it's these girls in the class trying to get to your sons. Rather it's, the, rather, it's the men in the class trying to get to your daughters and vice versa. Sometimes girls will use other girls to try to get your daughters. Sometimes brothers will use other brothers to try to get your sons. So these are the things that's going on inside the schools to corrupt our children. Y'all all right? While that's going on, um, when they come to the Sabbath, I'm listening to Liam, Officer Liam and Captain Yan. They're telling me about some of the stories that these brothers were going through when they go to school because they're really trying to do right. What? You, you, you ain't had sex yet? This and that and the other. So they hear these things and then they feel ostracized because there's no support group. So while they're trying to do that, the, the brothers was telling me that some of the girls just came out and said, you can imagine, said stuff straight to him to try to just put the picture in their mind to lure them right into that. Same thing with the girls. They do the same thing with the girls. So these are the kinds of things that's going on in the schools. So this is, this is the uh, time to really understand the importance of having discipline and to, to avoid temptation and also to avoid the dis to to uh, understand that the sin is deceitful, because they're trying to tell you all the good in it. Okay, so you got to be mindful of that. So this is what's going on 
in the young men's uh, group. So, so I left New York. I'm here now. And then I realized that this problem is pervasive throughout all of our UIC in terms of our, of, in terms of our young. It ain't just New York. Uh, when I got down here, same situation. If I go to Arizona, same situation. If I go to Atlanta, if I go to Chicago, if I go to Kentucky, wherever I go, that age group is literally experiencing the same thing. Y'all all right? So at that point, I said, well, we need to make this, this, um, this class, I mean, this group, Young Men Outreach, all across IUIC. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about when I say the Young Men's uh, group, that's what it was designed for, to keep our sons out of trouble. And I, was, I wanted to have something set up for the women to be able to do the same thing. But at the moment, we only had Titus II and the daughters of Sarah. And that's the reason why I ask, like I said earlier, that's the reason why I ask, are y'all discussing these particular things? Because that's the reality of what's going on with these, with these uh, teenagers and young adults, right? So with that being the case, there's a, there's a lot that we have to uh, be mindful of. So um, I also I, I had spoken to, um, to one of the brothers, I'll call him out, my, my, my dear brother, the son of my, uh, the son of my fellow deacon, uh, Deacon Asaph, um, you know, we, we kind of came up together and all together. And I asked him, I said, well, how are the young men in the truth? Because I wanted to get some kind of idea on what's going on in New York with that program because that's where it specifically started. And he was basically giving me an idea that a lot of the men in that age group have gone back into the world, so to speak, have been led away with the temptation, a good amount of them. So that's a crucial part of the nation. Because if we are not able to pass this legacy on to them, then it will literally fulfill what that enemy said, that Israelites is a, uh, is a um, fractured organization. So this is what we look to offset. We want to offset that with diligence. We want to offset that with discipline and paying attention and being real fathers and being real guides to the nation of Israel. Because that's our job, okay? And, uh, and the same thing with the women. The women have to watch over these daughters, have to be involved with them. Don't leave them alone too long because they will be gone. Y'all you, you hear me? Because this, this, uh, regardless of how comfortable we get, the enemy never sleeps because they understand the importance of corrupting the seed. They understand the importance of corrupting our children. They understand that. We might don't. We think, it's we think it's insignificant. They stay up. They spend billions and billions of dollars to send your children advertisements. That stuff costs money. To put an ad together, that costs money. To put all the music, get all of the, you get a whole orchestra to make music. You got to pay all of these different people on an orchestra, engineers, keyboards. They pay big money to make that advertisement geared at, pulling on the emotional strings of your children, and the next thing you know, you and your children can't even talk anymore because there's a barrier. Oh, mommy, you don't understand. Daddy, you don't understand kind of thing. That's because they have successfully interfered between you and your child. And there goes the neighborhood, literally, because once we go off the scene, if our children are not being reared properly, there is no more. Y'all understand? This is serious business. So, with all that being said, I'm going to get into my list. I'm going to make this statement. Like I said, I gave you the title of the class. The class is called Discipline, Temptation, and the Deceit of Sin. But I want to start off with a small subject and make a point about the Bible. The Bible. This book. This book here. This book is the master key to all the locks of our lives. I'm going to explain what I mean by that. The Bible is the master key. A master key is a key that can open all the locks in a building or whatever, right? Which means, in, a, in effect, that this Bible, one scripture, two scriptures, because many of us, we take notes when we come to our Sabbath. 
If you go back and you look at your notebook, you'll see that a lot of the scriptures that you have written down, provided you took good notes, some people don't really take good notes. Some people just write the scripture down and put a note on it. And, it, and if somebody else was to pick up your notes and look at it, they would not really see the continuity of understanding that flow from one scripture to the next because the information that's connecting the two is not written in there. But you'll have a lot of scriptures. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I'm not saying that everybody does this, but some people do this. I haven't, but in all fairness, I haven't seen that in, in the Carolinas. I've seen that in New York a bit. They would they'll write the scripture down, don't really put the real, the, 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 to the, uh, the discussion about the scripture on side of it so that you can know the reason why you went to that scripture. You can, in other words, you can read one scripture and you could go to it 10 times and, the t and all 10 of those reasons are totally different. You went to, like, like last night I was talking about, I'll give you an example. I'll just give you a clear example. Last night I went into Deuteronomy 28. I was on the, um, the Bible book of our fathers. Had a little rough start. I don't know how many of y'all seen that. But my, all the apparatus, the computers, everything was messed up. So I had to kind of go off the dome and was trying to get the wheels rolling. It's a little joke, right? But um, trying to get it going. And, um, and I went into Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And the same verses that you will have in uh, probably every class, because there's not many classes that we will teach where we don't hit Deuteronomy 28. Can I get a witness? So it, it will be there. And then you might have somebody, I'm just, I'm just going to throw a heckler in the mix for just a second. Ah, oh, man, I heard that scripture before. Y'all all right? But when I went to it, when I go to it, and I'm just speaking about me because all of us do this. We go into that scripture, and every time we go into it, we can pull new meat out of it. And when I say pull new meat out of it, pull out understanding that applies to areas of discussion that nobody's even talked about yet. Okay? Like when I was talking about um, the scripture in, uh, uh, give me that. Give me Deuteronomy. I'll just use this as an example. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 60, what is it, 67? Let me use this as an example. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 67. Mm -hmm. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even? And at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning? Now, who in here can tell me what that, how, how you've heard that scripture broken down? Who, raise your hands, who, anybody? Anybody. Okay, lie can. Well, you were here, don't so don't repeat what we said yesterday. What was the normal what is the normal understanding of us reading that? Okay, give my brother well, well let, yeah, let, let, let him get it. Because you were here last night, so I ain't up there grandstanding. I don't want you grandstanding. Come on. Uh, basically it was going into uh doing slave time, uh, mm -hmm. how we would wish that uh it was nighttime when it was daytime. Okay, I want everybody to listen to what he's saying. Say it again. Uh, basically, uh, say your name, brother, if you don't. Uh, brother Matthew. Brother Matthew. Yes, sir. All yes, praises. Sir. Come on. Uh, basically, the scripture going into uh, when it's when it's daytime, we was hoping that it was nighttime because uh, the harsh punishments we was going through, mm -hmm. uh, we could die at any moment. Right. And when it's nighttime, we ask the Most High, could we make it to the to the morning? Right. Uh, you know, we could die at any any given time. Exactly. Okay, that's good. Now, you've, many of us heard it uh, spoken like that, right? Now, last night, oh, you, can, you can be seated. Thank you. Last night when I went to it, I wanted to expound on it even deeper and actually bring up some of the actual events where that was being said during slavery. And I wanted to paint the picture in your mind of how, like I, I'll give you an example. Like, the scripture said, read it again. I'm going to add to what he said. And this is the reason why I say, although it's the same scripture, you can go to it as many times as you need to and extract even more understanding out of it to, to, to really get the fuller understanding of what it's saying. Y'all all right? Read it again and Dude. break it down. I mean, read it and then, you know, I'm going to stop you. I need you to stop. Come on. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 67. In the morning thou shalt say, would God, it were even? So we t I took that part and said, in the morning when we woke up in slavery, 
The slave master comes and says, okay, get ready to get to the fields to pick my cotton, to pick my peas, you know, to bale the hay, whatever we had to do, right? Some of it, we had to build houses. Some of it, we had to build the dirt roads and all that. We did all of that work. So I wanted to dramatize that a little bit so that, you, so that that statement could be illuminated in your minds, okay? So here we are waking up. I got a family. It's me. I got my wife. They allowed us to jump the broom. You dig it? Because they didn't really honor any marriages in slavery. They allowed us to jump the broom. I had a child. I got a kid now. So now, here it is. In the morning, we wake up to go to, go to the fields. As we go to the, as we go to the field, it said that in that scripture, it said that we will live in fear. He might do something to my son because my son, maybe he stole a, he stole a chicken yesterday or took a chicken from master's hens, uh, from one of his hen house or whatever. And now all of a sudden, they're getting ready to lynch my son. They're getting ready to lynch my son. And when my son is lynched, they're going to make my wife wash our son's blood out of his clothes. That happened in history. That's documented. The, one, the, the wife would have to wash out the white man's, the boss's, the, the, the executor, wash his blood, wash her son's blood out of the clothes that the maniac murdered my son in. All that trauma is there. So read it again. In the morning. Thou in the morning. Go ahead. Thou shalt say. Would God, it were even. Lord, could you help me make it through this day where I don't have to experience an incident like that? Although it's the same scripture that's written in Brother Matthew's Bible, I mean in his notes, it's also written in, in, in another brother's uh, records. It's written in this brother's records. It's written in this brother's notes. But every time we touched it, we went into different subjects that's using the same scripture. So in other words, it's not just merely saying, oh, I've read that before. It depends, on, uh, it depends on the application of that scripture to what you're dealing with. Y'all all right? So that's what I'm saying. So, uh, so read the rest of it, and then I'm going to get on with what I'm dealing with here. Read the rest of the verse. And at even thou and shalt at, and say. And in the nighttime. Now, we're back from the slave field. We actually made it through. My son didn't get lynched. My, uh, my wife didn't have to wash our child's blood out of, out, of the, out of the white man's, out of the slave master's clothes. We made it. So now it's nighttime. We get ready to lay on this cot. Because we really have a real bed. We're in a shack, no shoes. That's some hell of a situation we were living in. So here we are. We on the, we on the dirt floor, basically, with a burlap for a mattress. Uh, read. Read that statement. And in the evening... And at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning? So in the evening, it's nighttime now. Lord, would you be with me so that I can, so that me and my wife and child can make it to the next morning? Because we don't know what this white maniac might do. He might have a visitor from out of town and call him over and say, listen, I got plenty of black meat. He didn't care if the woman was married or not. He come to my room, come to my hole, come to my shack, you know, take a walk. This is my, this is master so-and-so. He's from plantation such and such. He's going to be with your wife a little bit. So that night I might die because some fighting going to go on. And many times that happened. There were situations where they, made, where they made men lay down with other men's wives, then called the husband back in to watch it. And the, slave, and the brother knew that because it had happened many times before. So he said, I don't want to do that because that's my friend. The white maniac said, well, if you don't, I'll castrate you. These are some of the atrocities that happened during these times where that statement would be said. Y'all all right? So don't just merely look at the scripture to say, oh, I got that scripture already. That scripture applies to many, many different aspects of our lives. Okay, even today. Maccabi. 
Stand up. I can't even hear you. Uh, oh, you saying this, you saying is the scripture saying that? Also, yeah. No. Yeah, it could be yeah. because that that makes sense. Because uh, thank you, that's a good point. That's another that's another example, and I'll use that. Thank you, uh, Soldier Maccabi. That's a, that's another example because in that kind of situation, it's like I was pointing out before when we say swing low, sweet chariot, because we want to be taken out of here. So Lord, just get us past all of this ugliness this ugliness so that we can get out of here. Lord, would you help the night come so we can get closer to the kingdom or get, or get closer to deliverance? We're looking for a deliverance. We're looking for a deliverance. We were looking for that. I should have, I have a book, Roots. You remember the, the saga Roots? Alex Haley and all that. There's a passage in the book. I should have, I haven't even brought it out yet, but it's one line where the, where the quote unquote slaves said that um, I'm trying to remember what it said, but it make reference to Moses freeing us children of Israel out of bondage. Okay, I'm gonna bring that. I got it in my. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bring that in here. Okay, so they were. The the point is, our people were looking for deliverance in slavery, and they referred to our deliverer as Moses coming to free us and to put us in there like they. We understood that we were Israel. Y'all all right? So to your point, Maccabi, yes, it could mean that as well, okay? Uh, so that's it on that, right? Now, I don't need the rest of the verse. Though that was the part that I needed to do. Uh, well, read the rest of it since we're there. Just get it out of the way, then I'm going to get back to my lesson. Are y'all all right, sisters? Y'all all right, brothers? Like, again, I'm not going to keep you long. I know I ain't going to finish it, and you know how that goes. But, um, but at least I'll give you a prelude to where I'm going because I'm going to stay on this topic for a while because I, I think it's important. And um, it's, it's direly important. Uh, like I said, I had uh, the word came from sisters in here to me. Please do, please uh, do a class or two that deals with the temptations of our youth. So I want to begin to focus on that. Okay. Uh, read on. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear. And for the sight hold of it, hold it. Let's see. We want to slow down there. It says, so we would want, just like Soldier McCarvey brought up, we would want the day to pass without an incident, and we would want the night to pass without an incident because I want to be alive when it's time for the deliverance. Read that statement again. For the fear of thine Because, heart. for means because. Because of the fear. Because of the fear of my son being lynched. He don't know any better. He went and took a can of beans. He went and took. Uh, uh, he went and picked up something from master's table or whatever. He don't know yet, but the master, the so-called master, ain't gonna care about that. He gonna lynch and destroy my son in front of everybody to quote unquote teach me and my wife a lesson. We have fear because we got to protect our children. We're like that today. When our kids go off to school, we are we are praying and hoping that they make it to school and make it back safely. That's the kind, that's the fear we live in. None of this has really changed, so you can apply that to now. Especially in New York, and I, and I only speak about New York because that's where I'm from, but I know that all of the uh, cities go through the same thing. When the kids, whether it's Charlotte, whether it's uh, um, Atlanta, wherever it may be, Greensboro, when our children leave the doorsteps of their houses, the parents are worried. Is my son going to make it back? Is my daughter going to make it back? So we worry about that thing. How, how was your day today? You almost want to like check them and see if they got bruises on them. Or the, because that's the, kind of, that's the kind of evil that's out here. Huh? Yeah. So where am I at? So read that. See, what I'm doing is I'm taking this one verse and applying it in areas that has sometimes... It doesn't get applied to. Y'all all right? Go ahead. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear. For the fear of our minds, which we shall fear. I'm worrying about my son. Worrying about my daughter. Worrying about my wife when she goes to work. Worrying about the wife. Worrying about her husband. Some of us drive these trucks all across the, all across the country. Their wives are worried like hell. They might get into an accident. You might get pulled over. Any damn thing can happen. So there's constant worry. Go ahead. 
and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see okay so that's it right yes sir okay so just wanted to lay that out there so now give me Isaiah 34:16 so like i was saying the bible is the master key i went through that barrage of scripture and understanding uh to illuminate that the bible is the master key the key was that one scripture and that scripture can uh, pertain to many aspects of our lives. It can pertain to literal chattel slavery, and it can also, as it does, it pertain to us today. Like I gave the example about schooling and so forth, when our children go off to school. Okay? So that key, that scripture, is a key that can open up many different aspects of our lives. Y'all all right? Read. Yes. In addition, it can also uh, reflect to the kids what you're bringing out with, with the kids when they're at school, with the with the temptations and the peer pressure. They they're wishing that the day be uh, be sped up as well. So, it, it, like you said before, it all it, it's a, it's it reflects it touches us all in all stages, whether we're young, old, whatever. Exactly. So the point that I'm making is that don't take these scriptures for granted. Don't look at them and say like I've made mention of that scarf. Oh, already read that no these scriptures this these are the words of god this is not just some novel that somebody wrote those words don't mean nothing but the words of god has a perfect connection with every aspect of our lives it's never humdrum it's never just a regular run-in-the-mill scripture huh right it ain't just the same old scripture many of our people when they ignore these same old scriptures, they get caught up in all kinds of evil because they thought they knew it. They thought they understood it. And then you feel, you find out that people get judged and, and put on blast for the simple stuff. Ain't nobody, nobody got in trouble because they did not understand uh, who was the governor of Capernaum during the Herculaneum. <laughs> Nobody got put out of the body. Nobody got in trouble for that. General Vespasian for the answer. Everybody be like, well, who was he? Anyway, um, nobody, those are not the things that get us jammed up. What gets us jammed up is like stuff like fornication, adultery, lying, cheating, stealing. The basic stuff. The Ten Commandments stuff. But I thought that was basic. I thought that was humdrum. I already know that already. Why are you always reading that? Because that scripture is the key to all aspects of your life. None of it is just simple. Y'all all right? And this is what we have to understand. Okay. Um, Isaiah 34, 16. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the Bible where you can find these keys. These key scriptures that that. Can, that is the answer to all our people's problems. That, that's what we say on the back of our show. The Bible is the solution to our people's problems. There has not one word been added to the Bible since it was written. But it covers everything about us. Which means that you have to continue to open up the medicine cabinet, the Bible, and find the cure to your disease, sin. And once you do that, you're on the right road. And there are different times when there are different scenarios, but, it, but the same medicine, thou shall not steal, thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not uh, uh, be covetous, lying. Those same things can pertain to millions of problems. So it's never a such thing as like, oh, okay, I already know that one. No, you don't know it. That's the point that I'm making. Y'all all right? Read that again. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. And read. And read the Bible. Go ahead. No one of these shall fail. None of the prophecies in this Bible shall fail. Because this is the master key. This Bible is the master key. Read. None shall want her mate. You can't mate the Bible with no other book. Period. The Bible is the solution to our people's problems. Go ahead. For my mouth it hath commanded. For the mouth of God hath commanded that these writings be recorded. Go ahead. And his spirit. It have gathered them. And God's spirit have gathered the books for Jeremiah, for Ezekiel, for Isaiah. That's what he's talking about. He gave it to them. 
You're going to have this many books. Isaiah, you're going to have this many books. Obadiah, you're going to have one book. Moses, you're going to write, you're going to record, or you're going to record five books. Stuff like that. Read. And they have cast the lot for them. And has what? And he have cast the lot for them. And he has cast the lot for them by books. That's what it means. He gave Paul X amount of books. He gave, uh, he gave uh, uh, the records of, um, of Matthew, John, Luke. That's what I'm talking about. He has cast lot. He cast them. You're going to write this many chapters. You're going to write this many records. Well, the Bible wasn't written in chapters back then, but all of the words there was given to them to write it. Y'all all right? Okay. So now with that understanding, give me the scripture about uh, show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. Yes, sir. It's still going on the same vein of what I was saying earlier. Was it 215? One yep. Timothy's? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved. That's all the part I want right there. So, a lot of people, when you hear the word study, let me use that. Let me dwell on that. Brothers, when you hear that, when you hear the scripture says, study to show thyself approved, what does that mean? Hands. What do it mean? Hold it. Take the mic. Means you gotta study in order to get the scripture in you, so that when uh, when you stand before the Lord, you, you can show yourself approved. Okay, that's generic. Okay, that's generic. It's right, but it's generic. That's the that's the regular answer. But that's I'm gonna go much deeper than that. Give it the uh, the microphone to someone else. What does it mean to study? He's correct, but I wanna go again. I wanna go deeper than like I said before. Like the example was made with the other scripture. What does it, how does it, how, you know, give me more. Shalom Come on. Bishop and leadership, Brother Devin. Uh, to what is it again? Say, say your name again. Devin. Gary. Devin. Devin. Okay, I'm sorry. Come on, uh, Come on Brother to, Devin. To be able to show our people and prove our people what's. Um, to be able to show your people. And it, to uh, prove that the word is uh, but let's, the Bible. Okay, you, you've moved past the word study. Yeah. Let's go back to study. The Bible says study. Study what? Uh, Before you get to, well, let's read the whole thing. Stay with me, Devin. Let's read, let's read more into it. Stay with me. Stay with me. Read it. Read it again. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. So let's just deal with that line there. Study for the purpose of what? Study to what? For the purpose of showing yourself approved before God. But let's just deal with the study part. Okay. What is the study part? The, uh, the scriptures. The scriptures. What scriptures? Everything. Uh, the laws. and. Uh, how would you. How Okay. You're studying the laws. Give me an example of you studying. And show. And, and, and give me the understanding of how that studying would be able to show yourself approved before God. I'm almost giving this to you by the way. I'm bringing it down. But go ahead. Uh, You're all right, Brother Devin. You're all right. Uh, Hold up, Maccabi. Come on. I'm making it a little bit. It's a little. little, little, little yeah. difficult. Okay. <laughs> well, you keep your ears open. My brother, Matthew. Shalom, Who else got their hand up? I'm gonna, okay, so I'm moving around. Well, I got you already, Maccabi. Just hang back. Come uh, on. Is the most I saying, like, study uh, what you struggle with also? Ah. So, now you're uh, getting there. He can uh, help you so he can remove, you know, that evil spirit. Okay. He done. Nah, keep, keep, keep that one in mind. Let's see what the rest of you had to say. Because that's a, they put their hand, they put their hand down. They said, oh, I ain't going after that one. <laughs> uh, Brother Jonah. Brother, what is it? Brother John? Uh, Jonah. Jonah. Okay. Uh, I was talking about like uh, so when studying, like be meditating on, on the law and stuff. Meditate on the laws. Yeah. Okay. That's it? Yeah, that's what I heard. All right. Okay. What's the next thing? Well, you said med meditate on the laws. Uh, it goes back to what Brother Matthew, you, you're, not, you're not wrong. You're correct. But I want to dig it a little bit further. When you study the laws, what's the first laws that you need to be really concerned with? 
um, like what they say, like the milk, like the simple things. The like things uh, that pertain to you, I'm going to make it easy. The okay. things that pertain to you. That's what, you understand? Why, if, if I don't, if, if I got a, let's say, I got a, I got a, I got a, uh, a lust for pornography. I got a, an, and, and then there's another lust of stealing and another lust of lying, right? If I'm going to study about uh, lying, well, I don't have too much of a problem with lying. I don't have too much of a problem with the other thing. But this first one, I got some real issues with. Those are the ones that I really need to work on. And once you study that one that fixes that problem, then you are ready to do what it say after study? To show yourself approved unto God. So now when the people see you, they say, you used to have a problem with this. You don't have a problem with that anymore. Why? Because I've studied the things that affected me. You dig it? You follow me? Oh, yes, sir. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So, uh, but that does not mean to not study who was the governor of Capernaum during the Herculaneum. <laughs> that doesn't mean not to study the, the, uh, the, the various empires and the Greeks and the Romans and Persians and the Spartans and all that. That doesn't mean to not study those things. So I'm not removing that, but oftentimes when we hear about study, we think that we have to have a whole library of books looking impressive, but meanwhile, the things that's rotten in me is not being uh, dealt with. So how am I really, uh, how am I really uh, showing myself approved? Because I can reel off many historical records and this and that and the other. Is that showing myself approved? No, probably when you go on the street, people can't really confound you. In the history, you tan them up. So mo many people thinking that they're approved is dealing with that particularly. It does in a sense, but in, the, but in the deeper sense, it really deals with us studying that fixes us so that the proof, so that the correction, so that the change can be seen. That's how God gets his glory. Now I see what that book did for you because I remember you used to have this problem. You used to be a whoremonger. You used to be this. You used to be that. And now I see that you cleaned up. So now I understand what that Bible did for you. Yeah. So you got me? Uh, yes, sir. All yes, right, sir. all praises. The, 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 that's a good point Bishop making because a lot of brothers who, who was well-versed in the history, great teachers, but they spirits, they were wicked and had sin all up in them, and they still, it didn't matter. So they didn't, uh, they didn't study to, to make themselves approved to God because they didn't work on them, them themselves. They, just, they were doing it for the outward, okay, to be seen of men and not to be seen of the Lord. Exactly. So, again, that does not negate that you, should, you need to know the history. You need to know about your forefathers. All that is very important, no doubt about it. Scriptures talk about that. You don't want to be confounded in the street. So that is definitely valid. But to do that and not deal with your particular issues, that's what the whole armor of God is talking about. You don't want to have a kink in your armor here you got a problem with lust and, 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 and uh, thievery and lying, but you can break down all kinds of history. Then I'll co here comes uh, one simple thing. You say, well, I remember this brother. Man, he was awesome with that teaching. Man, Lord, I done bought like 90 books following his class. Well, where is he? He's gone. What happened to him? Uh, he fornicating. Lying. Those kinds of things there. Y'all all right? So study the, to, fix the, to fix the problems in you. Once you do that, then you can show yourself approved of God because now the people can see how God's laws fixed you and it approved you unto good works. Y'all all right? That's the point of that. Okay. Uh, so... I want to talk about sin since we were talking about uh, applying with the study. We told when we when we study, we study to show ourselves approved. Holy, give me um, uh, twelve and one. Here's another example of showing yourself approved. Watch this. 
Saints. Romans, Romans. What is it? Uh, I beseech thee. Oh, yes, yeah. Follow me now. I beseech thee. Yes, sir. This is this is going along with what we talked about with study to show you that I self approved. The purpose is about us studying. Like I said, it's important to get all the history and all of that. That's absolutely a must. You must know that. But do not neglect the hospitalization of you that needs to be fixed by these scriptures. We all got problems. We all have sins. We have temptations. And we have very little discipline to work on those temptations. We have very little discipline to work on, on those temptations of sin. And the pleasures of sin and stuff like that. We have very little discipline in that. Read. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. So I'm coming off of study and fixing yourself by uh, applying what you've been reading to fix yourself. Read. So that you can be approved of God. That's the point I'm getting to. I want to talk about us being approved. In Timothy's. Uh, in Timothy's, it says, study to show thyself approved, right? Okay, so this is what we want to talk about. How do you show yourself approved? This is how. Read that. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. By the mercies of God. That's the grace that God gives us. He gives us time to fix what's wrong with us. That's why it's, the word mercy is there. That's the grace period. The grace period is that you owe a bill. You got to pay this bill back. And I, but I don't have the money to pay it all right now. Okay, no problem. We're going to give you a grace period of X amount of years to have this paid. Does that grace mean that I don't have to pay it? Come on, talk to me. No, but it's a period of grace that's extended to me to give me the opportunity and give me the chance to pay it off. But at the end of the day, the debt must be paid. Same thing with us. Christianity will have you to believe that you don't have to repent of your sins. That we don't have to repent of our sins. Come as you are and stay there. That's a lie. That's not in the Bible. We have to repent of our sins. The things that we did that broke the commandments that God gave us put us in jeopardy. Put us in the path of destruction. Put us in the path of judgment. And Christ's death on the cross was what brought the mercy for us to pay that, to, for us to re get the sin off of us. So how do you pay that back? By keeping his commandments. By learning the commandments, using the discipline that goes with the commandments to ward off the temptations of evil so that you can be found worthy, so that you can be approved. Y'all all right? Read. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Are sacrifices alive when we were sacrificing animals, brothers and sisters? Ah, uh, no. If you sacrifice an animal, is the animal going to be alive? Okay, that's what my question was. So read it again. Come on. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. So this is not talking about the sacrificing of animals, but yet God is requiring a sacrifice. What is the sacrifice that he's referring to? And he says a living sacrifice. The living sacrifice is the example of you sacrificing those evil temptations. Those, those sacrifices is you sacrificing the temptation of lust, the temptation of, of, of adultery, the temptation of fornication, the, te the temptation of lies. You have to sacrifice that, and you have to be a living example of your sacrificing to that. So when the people see that, when they see you, they say, this is, an, uh, this is approved of God. I can see where your study actually worked. I can see that when you applied these laws, you got, because me and you used to run together. We used to get in the car and go down to such and such and go get all the women and do all the whoremongering, all kind of mess. Y'all dig it. Same thing with the sisters. Get a whole bunch of women together, and they say, we're going, 
I remember they said I was in when I was in college. They used to have they used to have these parties called FMO parties for men only, meaning that you ain't got to bring no women. We we gonna supply all that. Total wickedness. Now we repent. We ain't doing that no more. Y'all all right? We ain't doing that no more. That's an example of being, of you sacrificing, of being a living sacrifice. Because when the brothers see you, when the sisters see you, they say, you want to go and do what we used to do? Said, no. Well, what changed? What happened? They look at you like that. You said, what changed is that I put on, I studied, and I studied what was wrong with me. I examined myself, and I found out what was wrong with me. And when I found out what was wrong with me, I went to the medicine cabinet to find out what laws deal with that particular sin, that deal with that particular temptation. Y'all all right? That's how that works. Read that again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A, a living sacrifice, meaning you are a live testimony of what the Bible did or what the laws did to those parts of your life, those, those keyholes, that, that master key, the Bible, fixed. Y'all all right? So that's what the study to show yourself approved is really talking about, along with everything else, but it's really talking about how the Bible fixes you in your problems so that the people can see the difference. Read the rest of that. Read that R Romans. Read the whole Romans again. Yes, sir. 12 and 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice so people can see the difference. Let your light shine so that others may see your good works. That's what it's talking about. That's the living sacrifice. You used to be a chain smoker. You used to be with all kind of liquor in this. You ain't doing that no more. You used to be a glutton. All of that you changed. Well, what got into you? What is the reason of the hope that you have, the scriptures talk about? And then you can show them. When they, he said, always be ready to give an answer to those who ask you a reason of the hope. You know what I'm talking about, that scripture? You know what I'm talking about? Let's read it for him. We'll come back to this here real quick. Ehu, you get it. Because you, you stay with me, Zarya. Yes, you sir. stay there. Let's just read that real quick. Anyone, anyone that get it, just bring it out. Okay, this is this is what we want to. This is what has to be shown to the people. We want it to be that acceptable thing that's right before the Lord, because we studied and we studied the things that's pertinent to us. We studied the we studied the laws that pertain to the things that's wrong in me. When I looked in the mirror, when I looked in the glass, and I behold the natural man, I didn't walk away from the glass. Not realizing what I just saw. I saw that I was a thief. I know you got it. I saw that I was a whoremonger. I saw that I was a liar. I saw those things in the mirror. So I went and opened up the mirror into the medicine cabinet and pulled the laws that dealt with that. Y'all all right? Read it. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes, come on. The book of First Peter, chapter 3 and verse 15. Come on. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Sanctify the Lord God in your heart, meaning walk according to the repentance that you just received when you examine yourself and you allow those laws to clean up those areas, those spots, those kinks in your armor. You allowed all of that. You allowed these laws to clean it up. Put on the whole armor of God. Come on. And be ready always to give an answer. Come on, brothers. Fix this thing here. It's popping. And be ready what? To to. And be ready always to give an answer. And to be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asks of you. To every man that saw you. Every woman that saw you. That's because you are, a, you are approved. You, when they see you and they see you different, they're asking now because they see the work. They saw the results of you studying. You examined yourselves. You found out what was wrong with you. And when you, once you've done that, you applied the law by studying. You studied and you found the law that dealt with that particular ailment, that dealt with that particular sickness. And once you did that, the person seeing you, they used to know what you used to be. And now they see the difference. And what does it say? Be, what ready, it? Be, ahead, ready. be ready always. Come on. 
to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you. So be ready to give an answer to the reason. Be ready to give an answer to what? To every man. To every person, man or woman, go ahead. That asketh of you. That asketh, that asketh you. A reason of the hope. The reason of the hope is what they see in you that they did not first have. They did not have that hope. They did not have that hope, but now they got the hope because they've seen it realized in you. What brought that on? By you studying the things that pertain to you. As newborn babes desired the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. So growing starts with you fixing your particular problems. Then you can get all of the other stuff, but you got to get it. You got to get yourself right first. Y'all all right? That's what this is talking about. All right? So where were we at before here? Let's go back to, yeah, back to Romans. Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you present your bodies a living example so that the people can see what the, what the master key can do, not only for me, but it can also do for you and you and you. Go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God. This Bible will clean you up so that you will be holy and you will be acceptable to God because what God requires is for us to keep the commandments. God requires for our slate to be clean of sin and evil. That's what he requires. So he said, once you've done that and you are a living example of that, that's acceptable to me. Read it. Which is your reasonable service. Which is our reasonable service because the mercy was given to us when we didn't deserve mercy. We broke the laws of the Most High. We were supposed to just die completely. But because Christ was, because Christ's body was put on the cross for our sins, we owe him. And it's our reasonable sacrifice. It is our reasonable service to do what he commanded us to do. Because by right, we're all supposed to be destroyed. So it's reasonable for us to do this. Y'all all right? All right, all right, all right. So now, thank you, brothers. Uh, let's see what's there more. Now, I'm going to talk about sin. I want to talk about sin and how sin works. How sin works. Okay? I want y'all to think about this. Sin, in this moment, is blinding to the realities of the judgment that later comes because of your lack of discipline to make the proper decision. I'm going to go through that again. Most people will look at sin as pleasure. Y'all all right? We have bad habits. I've even heard of a situation where it was a movie and I got upset when I saw it. And, you know, you, it's hard to watch movies with me because I make an issue out of stuff. So what the hell does he see? How many of y'all saw the movie uh, American Fugitive? Okay, it's on. It's on. Um, it's on Prime. One of them, but it's about the economy going bad, and it's this black. It's this black family. Uh, yeah, that's. A, did I say it the wrong way? What? A, what? Fugitive. Oh, what was it called? America, I'm sorry. American Refugee. Okay, that's why nobody's seen it. They said, what kind of movie is this? No, we ain't seen that movie. <laughs> that movie don't exist. <laughs> What's the name of it again? <laughs> American Refugee. How many of y'all saw that? Wow. Huh? Okay, he's uh, my, my brother Benjamin. He saw it. Officer Benjamin. He saw it. Huh? That's a must watch. Well, there's a scene in it. Only Benjamin could, uh, could attest to this because nobody else seen it. But th you remember the scene? I'm going to say it because I know many people that's watching it, they probably saw it. Um, there's a scene in there where you had, you had a family that was sitting outside and, and the sister was pregnant, right? One of them was pregnant. And the, then the, the two know each other. The two friends know each other. And she said, well, why don't you have a glass of wine? And the sister said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. And she said, but one thing won't hurt. And, to, and nobody paid attention to it. I got mad when I saw it. 
You understand? Because, you know, you women, when y'all are pregnant, there's a special thing going on there. You don't want to take the chance to mess none of that up. Y'all all right? And a man with good sense, I'm going to say it plain. When, you, when, you, when, when the wife is pregnant, the man in his mind is thinking, this seed, this is my seed here. This right here, I don't want no nooker coming to mess it up. I don't want no one stressing her. I don't want no one doing anything that will cause a defect in the forming of my child. A man will be driven to kill instantly when someone goes near that woman. You, you dig what I'm saying? So if, it's, if, it's, if you're on that kind of thing there, I'm listening to this deal here. I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would they say, oh, no, you can go ahead and drink and such and such. I'm like, been me. Let's say I'm the husband. And a friend going to tell my wife, and, a, and a, her friend going to say, go ahead and have, go ahead. One cup won't hurt. That's when, before I, before I go violently, I say, listen, here's your coat. Here's your purse. Here's your car. Get the, get the F out. Instantly, right then and there. Take your glass of wine with you. You understand? That's how, that's how I saw that moment. I said, why in the world would this even be considered normal? The point that I'm bringing behind that is that the wine at the moment might be the social, you know, it makes a social, the socialization, you know, you, you know, hey, you know, you get the social thing going on, and you're enjoying the moment, and you got the wine going on. But the consequences could be birth defects. But you won't know that at the moment. You're feeling good and jolly, but you're not paying attention to the judgments that will come later. That's how sin works. Y'all all right? So um, here's another example. In our youth, 20 years old, we ain't worrying about certain eating habits. We got the high metabolism. Huh? We ain't worrying about really taking care of ourselves. But then you'll get an older person with some wisdom say, hey, boy, you better start watching what you eat. You better start doing this, sister. You better start doing that. Don't do this, sister, because later on it's going to catch up to you. Ah, I don't want to hear that. I'm having a good time now. So you ignore that. And Old age comes in, and because you did not listen to that counsel back then, the health could have gotten so bad you have lost a limb. Let's just say you lost an arm. And the things that you used to do, take for granted, you can't do it anymore. I imagine that. I still got all my extremities. But my point is, I imagine that if I lost a hand or lost an arm, how much Difficult, how much more difficult my life would be at that moment when I could have avoided it by being disciplined early when I first heard that. Although it was tempting for me to do all of the things when I was young, but not and not seeing the immediate consequence. So we just did it all. Men sleeping around with multiple women. Oh, it feels great for the moment. Same thing with women. Sleeping around with many men. It's great for the moment and not realizing that there's a judgment for that. As you get older, your body going to start to show, it's going to show the evidence. Then other things going to creep in, men and women. Might catch a disease. You, and it can, on both sides, all kind of things can happen simply because you did not follow the counsel. Why? Because you ignored it because you, and you've uh, uh, enjoyed the temptation of sin for a moment, like that glass of wine. And you didn't pay attention to the counselor that said that if you continue to go down this road, you're going to destroy yourselves. That's where the discipline comes in. The discipline puts a break on impulse. The impulse is, let us go do this here. The discipline is, well, my parents and my leaders said that I should not be out here dealing like y'all dealing because it's going to have an effect on me later. So why don't I, why don't I, uh, put that into effect and be disciplined. Y'all all right? This is what, this is how sin and temptation work. Okay. Let's get my scriptures. Let's see, did I have, uh, now, 
Discipline, temptation, and the deceit of sin. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I ain't going to go too much further. Uh, next time I teach, I'm going to open up this thing even further. You all all right with that? So I'm talking about discipline. And as we read about discipline, you will hear it in the sense of men, primarily. Bible is masculine, uh, uh, textual book, as some have said. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. 2 Timothy, is it? Yes, 2 Timothy, yes. 2 Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Let's yes, read. sir. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is being spoken to the men, right? But does this exclude the women? Uh, who, what did you say? I didn't hear it. Say it out. It did, meaning in terms of the writing, but should a woman also be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ? So this could apply to her too. That's what I'm saying. Y'all all right? It's, a, it's, it's, it's our responsibility, men and women, to uh, give me Deuteronomy 28. Let me just show you. I'm going to show you that, that these laws and these commandments are pertinent to both. Give me, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 15. Listen. Listen to this. Watch this. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Listen good. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. It shall come to pass if thou, meaning the you, if you will not listen. Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's find out who Moses was speaking to. We're coming back here. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Listen. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And then we're one. going back here to Timothy. So I mean to Timothy so we can get my point in. Deuteronomy these, 1 and 1. Read. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Was Moses only speaking to the men? Okay. He said all Israel. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. That's, that's children, men, women, all the whole kit and caboodle. Okay. So he's speaking to all Israel. Now go to verse 20, go to chapter 28, verse 15, 1 5. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 20. So Moses spoke these words to all Israel, male and female. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Give me Colossians. The, uh, there's no difference. Uh, read. But it shall come to pass. But it shall come to pass. If thou will not hearken unto the voice. So it's the, the vow is talking about the whole nation of Israel. He's not just talking about the men. Y'all all right? So we are both responsible. We are both on the hook for keeping these commandments. Would you, you holding something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I ain't ready for that yet. Just hold on to it. Uh, read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Come on. To observe, to do all his commandments. So that's what, that was the prerequisite, that we do. We hearken and we do the commandments. Male and female do the commandments because he spake to all Israel. Come on. And his statutes. And his statutes. Go ahead. Which I command thee this day. Which I command the whole nation of Israel this day. Come on. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now give me verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And the Lord shall bring the whole nation of Israel into bondage a second time. Come with on. ships. With ships. That's how we got here. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there. Ye shall be sold unto And there ye, men and women, the shall, whole nation, and there ye shall be what? Sold unto your enemies. Go ahead. For bondmen. For what? For bondmen. For bondmen. I want you to stress the men. For bondmen and what? And bond women. So that means both of us are responsible. 
if we break the laws of God, not only are the men going to catch hell, but the women going to catch hell as well. Y'all all right? So we are all responsible to do this. Now, Colossians, yeah, Galatians, I'm sorry, Galatians. You got the verse? The, 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 the church verse. Book of Galatians, chapter 3 and verse 27. I'm sorry, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. That's the part I want right there, male or female. All of these are Israelites. Regardless of what faction of the nation of Israel you are in, whether you're free born, whether you're free born or born, uh, born in the servitude, regardless of what, what posture you fit in, you all can repent. You can all keep the commandments because we are all responsible for these commandments. That's why it's saying that there. Y'all all right? So now let's go back to where we was at in Timothy. The book of 2 Timothy. Because the rest of that said what? I'm sorry. Let's read the rest of that for the Christians. Yes, sir. For there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. For you are all one nation of Israel in Christ Jesus. It ain't talking about all nations. It's talking about the nation of Israel. Go ahead. So that was it on that, right? All right. All praise. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Team don't play games. Championship reigns need champagne. Babylon can't stop this campaign. Rampage, cause I know why the heat the rage. Cause the guys be bringing it out. We bring it this kingdom, we bringing it down. Lost sheep, we'd have been found. Wait until we get a crown. Crown talk. Yeah. Just that crown talk. Yeah. Nehemiah don't want to be like Nino Brown now. Cause this that king talk. Who? Real life king talk. Who? Like Solomon, I see things clearly like a greenhouse. The wordplay can't get colorful. The scriptures cutting you the butter too. Not to mention we a living legend. Don't know what to do when a myth is standing right in front of you. You better watch. Go back to Timothy's. Come on. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou... So, read it again. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the... So, therefore, so, it's, yes, it's talking to the men, but it also pertains to the women as well because we're talking about the grace in Christ Jesus. Like we read earlier in Romans where it said... Um, uh, by, the, by the mercies of our Lord that, what did it say over there in Romans? By the mercies of our Lord that you present yourselves as a living sacrifice, yes, okay? Sir. So that's talking to the whole nation, all right? There are scriptures that pertain to men only and there are scriptures that pertain to women only, but then there are, there are scriptures that's written in a masculine text but it actually means male and female, okay? Why would the Lord say for the men to keep the commandments and the women don't? For an example. Y'all all right? Read that again. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Go ahead. The same commit thou to faithful men. The they, so this is being given to Timothy by Paul. He said, listen, these records and these laws and these commandments, I'm giving it to you as a faithful man. And by this, I'm committing this to you. For you to do the right thing with it. Read that verse 2 again. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful the, men. The same thou, meaning you. The same that you are supposed to commit to people that's going to keep these commandments. To faithful men. Go ahead. Who shall be able to teach others also. So who shall be able to teach others also. So by our correction, when we put on these keys... Like I talk about that Bible, when we could, when we get ourselves together, and that living example is out here, people are learning, they're repenting because they see the change in you because you studied to show yourselves approved unto God by actually fixing what was wrong with you, and then the people saw that, and that's how they learned. That's how they ask you of the reason of the hope that they see in you because they see the change in you. Y'all all right? Read. 
Thou therefore endure hardness. Ha now here we go. Here it is. Thou therefore, as this, bi as this Bible is being given to you as parents, as this Bible is being given to you as brothers, as this Bible is being given to you as sisters, and we have sons and daughters. Read that again. Thou therefore endure hardness. Thou therefore, now that you have these records, now that you have these study tools, now that you have these commandments, thou therefore do what? Endure hardness. Endure hardness. Hardness. What is the hardness that is talking about? Is it saying, can't move? No. The hardness is that you being hard against temptation. The hardness is you being disciplined. The hardness is that you being resolute, that you be stern, that you have no wavering. You're not double-minded. You're disciplined. That's the hardness that it's talking about. Someone comes to you and says, hey, you pregnant, here's a glass of wine. Your hardness is no. You can be respectable when you say it, but if they're persistent, that's time for you to get your coat, get the hell out of here. You dig it? But at first, they may not know better. They might think it's customary. Say, I'll correct you. No, we're not doing that. And if you will receive it, you'll be all right. If you don't receive it, you're going to get, you might get the, the Will Smith. No, nah, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny as hell. Um, Shame on Will, by the way. Shame on him because he was programmed, you know. So that woman really, she had the uh, keys to him. But uh, <laughs> that was, I could say a couple of things about that too, but I ain't going to do it. Like after he slapped him, see, I, tell about I ain't going to say it, I'm going to say it anyway. After he slapped him, you saw how he walked off the stage? Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Sure, let me give him, let me give him a little break. I'm coming back to this. Show the clip. Pull it up. Yeah, yeah, I want y'all to see that. See, that, that's those nuances that you got to pick up. Let's get this here. So I done went off. And I ain't gone. I, I'm coming back to this, but I just want to throw that in there. Give y'all a little, uh, give y'all a little uh, recess, so to speak. Comic relief, if you will. You got the, put, let's get the video when he slapped him, when he walked up there. Keep my name. What is it now? Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. I want to, now, like I said, my brother Chris, I ain't got nothing to say. Cause he actually exercised a good level of restraint to do this, you know, for whatever the reason is. I'll leave that alone. But I want you to pay attention to Will as he slapped him. Watch this. And like the many people pointed out, he was laughing at first. But then the woman and the wife, they both laughing. And then she said, wait a minute, I'm going, I'm getting ready to show everybody that I got the poom poom purse strings. I got I I got the keys right here. She looked at him like Poom. gave him that look and instantly it wasn't funny no more. Then the then then the then the radio frequency waves because no words were spoken. See in marriages they have that kind of communication where no words have to be spoken. Like your child acting up in the supermarket, the mother give that child that look. They know to put that down. I'm about to get in trouble. Y'all all right? Wives do that to the to weak husbands. They look at him. Give him that look. And he automatically knows what to do. She ain't got to say nothing. Everybody in the room was like, what the fuck? What just happened? <laughs> but that's what happened. He was laughing. She was laughing. Then she said, show the, show the world. <laughs> and immediately... He became a toy soldier. He jumped up. Chris didn't even know what was happening. Oh, oh here he comes. Zit, 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 zit. He thought it was a joke. Pow! The hell? Play it. <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please, Lord. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> That was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh -oh. See, the look over it. Hold on. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. 
The look already happened. It happened so fast. It happened in nanoseconds. Brothers didn't even see it. But he felt it. He felt that heat coming from over those eyelashes. Nah, I ain't going to call it umbrellas. I don't know. Maybe she got them on. I don't know. But since she thought about it, that's that look right there. So he said, time to get him. He's smiling. He's laughing. But then she said, nope, I'm going to let you get, get it. Get him. She said, I'll get him. <laughs> Go ahead. Hit, hit the button. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Stop. From here on out, I want y'all to check out the posture. Watch, just pay attention. Watch him. Oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Okay. Did y'all, like, I, uh, dear, I took care of him. Do you acknowledge it? Pompous. I did my duty. One strike from manhood. Mm. Yeah. He's like, what the hell just happened? But anyway, let's get back to the lesson. Y'all all right? But that's, that's when you're programmed. And let me just say this here. That's another example of being tempted. Because, because of that, what did he actually accomplish? And he lost, I mean, the hell with the Grammys. You know, the hell with all of it. Who gives up about a damn Grammy? Like the record, you know. <laughs> I'm so, that's public enemy. I just left out the words, in it, you know. Um, but anyway, the hell with that. But they barred him for like 10 years or something like that, right? He's getting blasted all over the media. He's catching all kinds of hell. And it made it worse. And now he's thinking about it. Now he's talking about something. Well, I was always bullied. There's all this stuff coming out now. And this is the way you get to exude your manhood by going up there and attacking a man that's about damn near half your weight. Somebody said, well, why, don't you, why don't you slap the rock? You slap Chris Rock. Why don't you slap the rock? I just threw that in there, right? Dwayne Johnson, right? Go up there and slap him. She give, she give him the look. He said, she give him the look. And, and, and Dwayne is up there. The Rock is up there, giving him, giving the business. She gonna look at him. You better go on there. He, nah, I think I'm gonna pass on this one. <laughs> I'm gonna take the L for this one. Y'all all right? All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> uh, Chris Rock, man, Lord, your name should have been The Rock. You'd have been, you'd have been all right. Uh, let's go back to where I was at. <laughs> Second Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness. So it's, it's up to us to endure hardness in the trials of temptation. During, during us being tempted to do what we know we should not do. Before we get involved in sin, we know we should not do it. But because the temptation and the pulling on you, oh, it will feel good. It'll be this. It'll be that. You can have one drink. You can lay down with this brother. You can lay down with this sister. It's only one time. Damn, you never get to do nothing. Some of your children are hearing that. That's what's going on in these schools. Brothers have literally said that. The women are coming up to them and saying some of the nastiest stuff right in these men's ear, walking up to them in the school and literally just pouring it on them. And they got to resist with every fiber of their imagination. To get away from that thing. And the same thing is going on both sides of the aisle. Y'all all right? But the Bible says that we should do what? Therefore what? Thou therefore what? Endure hardness. So we have to endure hardness. The focus is not necessarily on the hardness because hardness trans translates into discipline. Therefore endure discipline. But my focus is not necessarily on the discipline. My focus is on the endurance of it. Endure discipline. Endure hardness. Because there are times 
when your discipline may not be up to speed. It depends on your time of the day. It depends on what's going on with you wherever you are. There are times, like for instance, if you're around the brothers and the sisters, your resistance to sin is super great. Y'all all right? Yeah, I wish somebody would come up to me and try to tell me something. You and a whole camp full of brothers and sisters. Ain't nobody even going to come up to you. But when you get home and they got your number, ring, ring, ring. Are you alone? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me show you what I'm working with. Damn. Well, I don't really want to see it. But I keep talking to you. Yeah. Next thing you know, boop, you don't open it up. So your resistance have not endured. Your temptation, your uh, your discipline, your hardness have not endured at that time. But the Bible says you to endure hardness all the time. That's the point. Not only when you're here in my presence only, like the scriptures talk about but also more in my absence. That's when the real discipline has to come up. You know what I mean when I say that scripture? Give me that. Give me that scripture about the uh, in my presence only. Watch this. So when we talk about enduring hardness, we have to endure hardness in our low time. When we all among each other, we ain't, ain't nobody going to fornicate up in here. Not at, not at the moment. Y'all understand? But when you're home, when you're away, when you're at your school, when your sons and daughters are at school, some of the same daughters and sons that'll be in the body with us, but when they are away from you, their endurance is weakened hard, is weakened greatly. Read, you got it? Yes, sir. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Listen now. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Wherefore, brethren and sisters, what does it say? Not as in my presence only. Not, all, not in my presence only because when we're together, we see some evil. Nine, well, let's say 99 out of 100, if somebody commits some evil right here in the body, chances are somebody's going to tell on it. Can I get a witness? I just saw so-and-so, sister so-and-so. I saw brother so-and-so doing this, doing that. Murmuring and this and that and the other. Chances are that's going to get out pretty quick because your resistance is up hard against evil. Anything that you see evil is going to get immediately dealt with because you have that cloud of witnesses, all these brothers and sisters with you to help build you up. So you don't feel alone when you're exercising proper judgment. When you see that the brother or the sister is doing something that they should not be doing, it's easy to correct them because you're in with the company that is in agreement with that. So that's very easy. But when you're home and you're watching TikTok and you're watching Instagram, you're on Facebook, ain't no brother nowhere around, ain't no sister nowhere around, then boom, the resistance is low. Read it again. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only. Not, all, not in my presence only. Go ahead. But now much more in my absence. So when I'm gone, you need to be even that much more disciplined. You need to apply even extra endurance and, hard, and, and uh, hardness. You have to turn your battles up even higher because you are by yourself, because you are home. So that means you have to really turn that discipline all the way up, endure hardness all the way to resist evil uh, concupiscence, to resist evil conversation, filthy communication, corrupt good manners. That don't, that's not going to normally happen in here with all of us sitting here. Somebody, here's, you know, you got a body of us sitting here. What chances do you think somebody going to come in here and spill some filthy communication to any one of y'all and his behind don't get checked in negative seconds? Zero. It ain't happening. He won't even open his mind, 
much less his mouth. His mind won't even go. Hey, his brothers might even read my nasty thoughts. <laughs> you stare at the brother too long. What you looking at? Now I'm looking at you. I see your filthy, dirty mind. Damn, he saw that. So you ain't going to get too much of that up in, you know. Y'all all right? But when you leave, catch you by yourself. Well, I just wanted, since I always just wanted to say these things to you, but I couldn't have said it in the body. Mm-mm, too many people watching. But now I got, you know, I bumped into you into the store. By the way, come here, sister. Let me say this. Let me say that. Y'all all right? And then the next thing you know, we get, a, we get a report. What? These two did what? That's how it happens. Because they caught them outside of the herd. The sheep that went wandering off and didn't take the discipline that's in the herd. They didn't take that with them. They did not take the hardness that's in the herd. They walked out there, la di da di da di da di da di and got caught out there. Mm. I can't hear you, brother. If you're going to speak, hit, hit, hit it on the thing. That's, that's, uh, that's also going back to what you're saying, these extra layers, saying that these holy days being a, a day of rest. Right. A day of rest of what? From us, from us enduring all exactly. week, our, our, enduring all these temptations, inflictions, and all these. It's more than just, just work. It's right. Also, like you said, getting, getting that battery put back in your back. Right. Exactly. Uh, read on. I'm going to read this in another scripture, then we're going to take the break, and then 3 o'clock will be here. Uh, read on. I'm going to wind it down. But now. Just, just for the day, then I'll pick up the rest of this later. Y'all all right with that? Yes, sir. Sisters, y'all okay? I hope y'all taking this in because a lot of good stuff here. Uh, read. But now, much more in my absence. But now, much more shall you endure hardness and discipline, much more in my absence because I'm not there to be your, back, your background, to be your support. When we all in here together, we got each other's support. Y'all all right? But when we're by ourselves, that's when they want to get you. I remember we were speaking on 44th Street. This way back, way back, way back in the old school. And some, we call him a clan, but he was really a bum. He comes up. He's on a, bi he's on a bicycle. We got the camp rolling. He said, white power, white power, white power. That's what he, by himself. Screaming white power in the middle of Times Square. Brother grabbed the mic and said, he said, this is evidence of your kingdom going down. This is the funniest damn thing. I said. He said, this is evidence of your kingdom going down. Here's a white man on a bicycle screaming white power. And what kind of power do you have? You're on a damn bicycle screaming white power. That was funny as hell. And that was right after the riots, too. Right after the uh, L.A. riots in 92. Uh, in, uh, Remember that? Then the brother grabbed the mic again. He said, well, where the hell was all the white power when they were burning down L.A.? <laughs> he said, white power was getting the hell out the damn way. That's what he said. <laughs> he said, huh? They were, yeah, they were boarding up stores and all kind of stuff, worrying about, talking about some white power. But anyway, that's, that's not the, uh, <laughs> what was I reading at? What, what, I don't even know why I got there. Come on. Where am I at? But now, much more in my absence. But more, but now, much more in my absence. In my absence. Oh, now I remember. Now I remember the fuck. The guy kept screaming. He said, why don't one of y'all walk by yourself? Because whenever we would leave, we, you know, back then we, we didn't even think that, you know, brothers would go get hot chocolate and all that. On the Sabbath. We didn't, you know, we didn't have that understanding back then. Y'all all right? Buying a hot chocolate on the Sabbath because it was cold or whatever. And um, so he would see when we would do that, there'd be a group of brothers that would walk with him. They'd go use the bathroom or whatever. Brothers be with him. So he'd be see standing on the side. He's just looking and said, damn, yeah, I can't catch none of these by them damn selves. They're always moving as a team. Why won't you walk by yourself? <laughs> he was screaming at. But my point is, that's how evil wants to get you. They want, they want to catch you off when you ain't got your support with you. Long as you got your support, you're going to be very resistant to temptation and sin. You're going to be very resistant to evil communication. You're going to check it right there. But if you find yourself separating yourself from the body, like the scriptures say, these are they which separate themselves. Those are the ones that get caught up because there's no hedge around you. There's no protection around you. You all all right? And that's when that nut that's on the bicycle catches. He say, oh, I got one of them right here. 
that he got a whole swath of clan men come sweeping out between the cars and jump the brother. We weren't having that. Y'all all right? So my point is, move as a team, never move alone. And although we have to be alone sometimes, because there's times you might be on the road or driving, whatever, don't ever be too far away from the brothers or the sisters. You don't go so long without communicating. Pick up that phone. Be in communication because it'll keep your mind in the right spirit. But if you get to find yourselves drifting to the, to the side too much, and the last time you spoke to any brother or sister was a week, two weeks, three weeks, you're on your way out. Because when you stop communicating here, somebody else, some evil is fulfilling that empty space. And that's when your mind begins to change. Y'all all right? Read that. Let's, 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 let's wind it on down. Read. But, but now, much more in my absence. But much more that we are to endure hardness and discipline in, in the absence of each other. When we are not around each other like we would love to be on the Sabbath. That was, the, that was one of the bigger things that I really was worrying about when we were uh, constructing this place here because we was, without the, we was without a physical school for a couple of months. Y'all all right? And I particularly, like everybody else, I was worried because I said if, if, these, if these brothers and sisters, that's why I was like, listen, go to Atlanta. Go here, go, because I needed to keep something going because if you stay too long without that coming together, the spirits from out here is going to start to wear on you. You dig it. So that's the importance of that. Uh, read. Read that again. But um, now, much, much more in go. my absence. But now we are to endure more discipline. Your sons and daughters have to endure more discipline when they're not around the brothers and the sisters. You got to carry that with you. That's the keys that the Bible is causing us to have with us, even in, in the absence of each other. We have to keep this as the frontlets in our mind like the book of Deuteronomy talks about. Y'all all right? Uh, go back to Timothy. It's about to wind it. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure discipline. Go ahead. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, soldiership belongs to men, but women have to be disciplined. You're digging it. So it's not excluding women. They're just not calling you soldiers per se. But the discipline still matters. You have to be disciplined over your own thoughts. Discipline over the conversation that you allow yourselves to get involved in this. Mind the time when you're talking to different people. If you, if you are among the indiscreet, what the scriptures say? Class, what did the scriptures say on that? Observe the time. What does that mean? Keep it short and brief. So you're observing the time. What are you really doing? Let's paint the scenario. You're, in, you're, you're, in, you're at work near the water cooler or wherever you're at. And here comes, this, here comes Slick Willie. He's talking about getting up under your dress. But y'all work together. Y'all all right? The scriptures say what? Mind to tell. What the scriptures say? You got it? Get that scripture for me. You got it? If thou be among the indiscreet. Real quick. I'm almost done. I just want to get these last points. I got like two more verses, not even chapters. It's two more verses that I want to get. You got it? You, Gail, you're looking for it, right? If thou be among the who? Benjamin, you got it? Where's it at? If thou be among the indiscreet. Anybody? If thou be among the indiscreet. You got it? You got it? Yes, sir. Read it. Come on. Sirach, chapter 27, verse 12. Listen. If thou be among the indiscreet. If thou be among those who are indiscreet, meaning they have no discretion. I like to break the words down sometimes. They have no discretion in terms of the subject matter that they speak about. There's supposed to be a discreetness in your speech. There's supposed to be discipline in your speech. You want to talk that talk about being naked up under the covers and all that? That conversation is supposed to be in the bedroom with your husband. Okay? You ain't got to be discreet in there because you and the, the bed is undefiled in there. But when you're going to take that conversation and bring it out here, that means you're not the practicing discretion. You're bringing out private business in the doggone atmosphere with everybody. That's not discreet. And if you find yourselves among spirits like that, the Bible tells you what to do. 
Y'all all right? Read it. What does it say? If thou be among the indiscreet. If you be among those who have the lips where there's no discretion, no discipline, they're just saying anything, and you're sitting up there eating it up because your mind is being poisoned as you continue to listen to it. Because filthy communication, like the scriptures say, be not deceived, filthy communication corrupts good manners. There ain't no maybes in that. It will corrupt you. You, if your discipline is supposed to recognize that and say, you know what? If I continue to stay in this circle, my good conscience is going to be defiled by continuing to listen to this. Read. Observe the time. Observe the time. That's the part I wanted to get to. What does it mean to observe the time? How does that work? I want to give this scenario. Observe the time meaning, you know what? I've been here two minutes, three minutes. I need to find a way out of here. Hey, my mama calling me. <laughs> okay. There, you know, there's a cell on apocryphals at the school. <laughs> huh? Camp 101. Daughters of Sarah. I gots to go. See ya. My phone ringing. Anything. You got to break that spell because when some, you got to think about how communication works. When you're, communicate, when you're communicating with somebody, don't you realize that the objective of a conversation coming from one to the other is a spell? I don't mean it in an evil sense. It is designed to get your attention. I'm not talking because I, like I'm talking to you now. I'm not necessarily casting a spell on you, but I'm speaking because I want your attention. You understand? I'm trying to get your attention so that you can hear what I'm saying. I want the communication to get to you. But if I'm speaking filthiness and I'm gathering your, 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 your uh, attention, after a while, just like the words that I'm saying, hope that they will have an effect on you. If I'm speaking filthiness, I'm looking for the same result. I'm looking, I am looking for the filthiness to corrupt you. And that's how that will work. Huh? With a smile. But as, I'm, as, as someone who's looking to corrupt you, they want to keep you there. Here you're trying to pull away. No, 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 don't go yet. I've actually seen when people try to break away. I've seen like there was a woman. Here's a guy talking all kind of nastiness. And the girl did not want to have nothing to do with him. So she's trying to get away and the Negro literally grabbed her. Said, no, mm -mm, I want you to hear this. And after a while, she gave in. But he comes, at first, the spell wasn't working. So he kept on pushing. And like we always say, you give any of these nookers your ear, they will later get your damn underwear. You pay any attention to any of these guys talking this filthy mess, you will eventually, here, take the underwear. Because once you listen and you start entertaining them, it sends a signal, I got the green light. She's saying no, but in reality, she wants more and more. And he's going to keep on going until he gets there. Y'all all right? But that Bible says what? Read that. If thou be among the indiscreet. If you be among the indiscreet, the indiscreet meaning that your speech is not seasoned with salt, meaning the Bible. If your speech is not according to this Bible, what does it say? If thou. Observe the time. Read the next part. Observe the time. Observe the time because I cannot continue to stay here because if I continue to listen to you, your thoughts of communication is going to eventually corrupt me. Watch your words. For they will become, uh, no, watch your thoughts, for they will become words. Your words will become actions. Your actions will become habits. Your habits will turn to your character. Once your character is changed, your destiny is destined to follow. So once the, once the evil speech comes in and you don't observe what you're hearing, and you allow it to get in there, it's going to eventually rot your whole apple. That worm is going to get in there and rot your whole system. So you got to observe the time and cut it off immediately. That's the endurance of hardness. And it's much harder when you're alone rather than when you're with your brothers and sisters. And nookers look for that. Even women look for that. Want to catch you by yourselves. Oh, you and that Israelite stuff. Yeah, I've been watching a few videos. Yeah, 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 you do. <laughs> well, come teach me the scriptures. I live on so-and-so. 
come at night. Park your car over such and such so that nobody's. You already look because you done showed you her stuff on camera already. You already gone there already. You're done. Lord have mercy. Read. But that was it on that, right? There's a little more, sir. Come on. But be continually among men of understanding. Thou, man. But be continually with brothers and sisters of understanding. Why? Because that's going to help build you up. Let me show you how important that is. Let me show you how important that is. Give me about Jesus. Uh, what is it? Luke 4. Where Satan tempted him. Listen to this. The one where it says in the angels at the end. You know what I'm talking about? Luke. Was it Luke 4 or 6? When Christ was being tempted. I want y'all to hear what it says at the end. After he had fasted for 40 days. Y'all with me? I ain't going to be long. I just want to get these parts in there. Huh? Yeah, read that. Come on. Luke 4 and 4, right? Start start up. uh... Let's start reading, brothers. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Listen. Go ahead. And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Go ahead. This is what Satan was trying to tempt Christ. Read. But by every word of God. But by every word of God, read. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Now, hold it. Satan came to Christ and said, if you would bow down and worship me, all of this would be yours. I want, I want you to, I'm going to really zero in on this statement here. Read that statement again. Watch this. And the devil. Talk about temptation now. And the devil did what? Taking him up into a high mountain. Took him up on a high mountain and did what? Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In a moment of time, Satan put the whole world in his mind. Showed him all of the splendor of Egypt. Showed him the final, showed him every pleasure of sin. Showed him all. I want you to understand what Satan was showing him. Showing him everything. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. Showed him all of that. Showed him everything. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, all this power. All this what you see. Will I give thee. I will give it to you. Go ahead. And the glory of them. And the glory of it all. You want a harem of women? You got it. (laughs) You want bling bling? You got it. You want slave servant, whatever you want, whatever your heart desire, I got you. Go ahead. For that is delivered unto me. Because it's given to me. Read. And to whomsoever I will give it. And whomsoever I choose to give it to, I'll give it to him. Listen. If thou therefore will worship me. If you will worship me, all this shall be thine. Come on, read. All shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Come on. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. That's when his discipline kicked in. And him only shalt thou serve. That's when his discipline, that's when his endured hard, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, that's when that kicked in. That's what we all supposed to do. Go ahead. Listen. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God. Cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Where's the part where it says angels ministered unto him? Is that the scripture? Or is it in the other? There's two. There's one in, it's the one in Matthew. Give me that one. That's the one I want. This is good, but I want the one that used that. I'm making a point about, so I'm looking for it so long, I'm almost about to forget my point. Matthew 4. Matthew chapter four. at the end of the at the end of the situation yes, after sir. he attempted him. You yes, gotta sir. just read the verse. Matthew chapter after four. After he was attempted. Yes, sir. Verse eleven. Then the devil leaveth leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. That's the part there because after all of that temptation, the brothers had to come and build him back up. So after you dealing with after you deal with this evil out here, your your children in school. Some of you at your jobs or whatever, and you deal with all kinds of evil, you're going to come home and not call the brothers. Come home and not call the sisters. 
And you're going to sit there with all that evil in your head. You was being tempted by Satan the minute you stepped out the door. Hell, even at home, with your phones, you're tempted by Satan. You better realize that the endurance of, of your hardness goes much more when you're out of here. We're the angels in here that's ministering unto you, that's keeping the evil thoughts out of your head. You dig what I'm saying? But when you're outside, you don't really have that protection. That's what Christ is saying. He says, so when that happened, immediately the angels had to come and deal with him so that his resistance could be even strong in periods of when he's by himself. That's the deal with us. Y'all all right? Uh, go back to Timothy's. Verse 3, sir. Verse 4. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. All of us are warring. It's good against evil. All of us are warring to keep the discipline. All of us are at war because there's a, there's all, there's, there's a constant force of evil trying to destroy every one of us. Trying to destroy you, trying to destroy your children, your sons and your daughters, and your babies. There's a force, there's evil spirits that's trying to destroy it all. Read that again. No man, that war. So we are at war. So if you understand that you are at war, why are you going to entangle yourself in evil speech? Why are you going to why are you going to entertain a wicked brother or a wicked sister? Why are you going to entertain that when you know that filthy communication will corrupt your good manners? Why would you even do that? Read. Entangle himself with the affairs of this life. Go ahead, which is sin. Go ahead. That he No, I'm not letting my wife drink no damn wine. She's pregnant. Are you crazy? Go ahead. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. That we may please the Father and the Most High who have chosen us to be a soldier. Now, give me Ephesians 6 and 1 and I'm going to end it there. Ephesians 6, 1 and 2. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. This is what we have to make sure that they do. Our children, when they leave our sight, out of our presence only, they are being tempted by everything to be evil. Go ahead. For this is right. For this is the right thing to do, that these children learn how to obey their parents because their parents is in the scriptures. Go ahead. Honor thy father and mother. And that's what our children have to be taught to do. They have to learn how to honor their father and their mother. And by them doing this, they are not entertaining evil. You can't do both. They're either going to follow what we tell them as parents in righteousness to build up their resistance to temptation and evil, or they're going to get caught up in the evil. And that's how they get lost. Y'all all right? So uh, read, finish the verse. Which is the first commandment with promise. This is the first commandment with promise. That's the most I is saying about your children. Obey your parents in the Lord. Okay. For this is the right thing. And this is the first commandment that our children need to understand with promise. Y'all all right? So I'm going to stop there. And uh, I'll pray to the most. I hope y'all got something out of this class. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.